Alright, hello and welcome back to another episode of Medieval Dynasty. We're up in Tutki. Uh, if you saw the last episode, you know we, we made a campfire and slept up here. So I have to tell you a funny story about what just happened. So before I brought you guys back, uh, I made a couple knives so that I can sell them to help pay for a bow. And so I couldn't see, I, so I, I see no marker, right? There's no marker here at all for the worker. Usually there's a, a, a person and a, and a marker. So I was like, oh man, what the heck? And I was like, well, there's nobody here. And there's actually an achievement in the game to steal something, which I've never done. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just do that real quick off camera. I'll just yoink a bow and then I'll just tell you guys like, you know, I got it and I'm headed home. So I come in here and I walk over and then see how it says Rob, and I opened it, and there was a bow in there. And I was like, oh, I should take this. And I was like, well, maybe not. And then I go like this, ready? Boom, he's right here. He said nothing. I was so creeped out. I, like, jumped. I, like, was startled. So, anyways, do do? we can talk to him. Uh, he actually has a quest that we can do a side quest, but I don't want to do that right now. Uh, I want to do show Let me your me wares. Show you my wares. And he's, you know, condescending or weird. So we're going to sell these and get 120 coins. And then he has a bow here for 135, which is perfect. So we need a bow. And then we can buy some stone arrows, I guess. We'll be able to make these at home, so I don't want to buy... Gosh, that's so expensive. But I don't want to have a bow with no arrows going home. That seems foolish. So let's maybe get four. Oh gosh, those are so expensive. And let's see what his what is it? Uh if it's to get him a knife, that would be cheap and easy. If it's to get him a bow, I'm gonna be not happy. What is it? What is it? Why doesn't it tell me the mission? Journal. Side quest. Time to hunt a bow. Are you kidding me? If I give this to him, can I buy another one? This is so weird. <laughs> well, he does have a longbow that we could buy. You know what? I think I'm just going to do that. It's silly, but... It was nice seeing you. Alright. So we got some Dynasty Rep doing that. So let's go ahead and put our longbow in maybe three. Okay, we got some diplomacy for that. Um, we could make a little more coin while we're up here, but no arrows. What do you, oh gosh. <clears throat> what do I have to do with these? Equip. You have to hit F to equip the arrows. Okay, so now, boom. And four should be good. Let's go ahead and get home. I know, you're probably like, didn't we just spend the last episode running up here? Yes, we did. There's a lot of this game that is running, but one thing we could do, uh, whoa, that's pretty cool, that bird flying. I'm not going to waste a $10 arrow trying to shoot it, but uh, not that I'm bitter about that price or anything. So while you guys were gone, a few things leveled up. Well, diplomacy you just saw, so we get diplomacy knowledge, but survival knowledge leveled up, and here's what's cool. Now that we've been at this a little while, I actually want to spend a minute and talk about these. So survival knowledge is just the same as the knowledge for the other ones. You want to level that up so that you level up faster. So insensitive makes helps you with temperature. Iron liver helps with uh, poisoning. Survival sense we already have. Strong as an oak gives you more health. Uh, survivalist uh, slows the loss of food and excuse me water. Not bad. That well, maybe we do that. Headstrong is higher alcohol resistance. I don't really drink in the game. I don't understand the reason for it. Water Dancer is 10% uh, faster movement in water. Now, if you were going to do a lot of fishing or, 
I, I guess that's why you would do that, but for us, it's it's, it's a no-brainer. We don't want these things going down quickly, so we'll level up the survivalist. Um, and then for technology, we actually got access to the uh, to the kitchen. Right here, we got access to the kitchen. So we can now unlock several different schemes to be able to make things, including pottage, which we can use cabbage and meat in wooden bowls. Uh, we, we're going to need that workshop, so maybe we'll go ahead and make that maybe this episode. And then we'll be able to make buckets and wooden bowls so we can get this going. But that pottage is 100 we have to uh, buy. And what is our money at right now? Our money's like right around that, is it? Yeah, 106. So what we could do is, you know, sell some more things. Like we could sell these furs and whatnot just to uh, kind of pad our savings. We could sell the extra wooden shovel if we wanted. Uh, but what I was going to say when I hit this tab is instead of running like we did across these ones, we can take this road down along here and we might find carts or things like that. And who knows, we might find a cart and then we can sell at Borowa and then get home. So as tempting as it is to sprint like I always do, now that we can defend ourselves against, you know, like if I see, okay, it says we spotted a badger. Do you see it? I think a badger, you need to get two hits, maybe three. But that would give us furs. Um, but we're starting to get to more of the core mechanics of the game now that we can hunt. You've seen, oh, here we go. So we can pick up this plank, we can get that log, very nice. It's not a lot, but every little bit, you know, we're at the point of the game now that every little bit like that is helpful. And it's funny, sometimes you get a log and you're like, we have a literal forest full of those, who cares? And sometimes you get, you know, a bottle of alcohol that is literally worth hundreds. So, you just never know. Our health is not great, so, you know, we have to be careful. I don't think we have any heals. We'll go ahead and get some water here. And also, while I'm here, we can, I believe, fill the water skin. This will be what we put in the house of our of our workers that will satisfy their water for a little bit. And then once we build the workshop, we can make buckets, and then they can just get buckets of water. So, this is a cool part of the map. If I do another playthrough, I want to build out this way. So we got wool fabric, bronze shears, which we won't need for quite a while. Because sheep are experienced gate gated. But it's nice to have those. Bronze shears will last us for a while. So that'll be nice. We won't have to buy shears. Or craft them. Alright, we'll keep our eyes open for any bandits or carts. Sometimes there's stuff along the shoreline. Not really where there are reeds. But this is the thing that I feel like a lot of people are tempted to just, you know, let's just sprint through everything. And um, that, I think, is a detriment to your own playing experience. I know I sprinted a lot earlier. And I know that the foggy, rainy day isn't the prettiest in the game. But it's I think it's well worth taking the time to do a bit of exploring. You know, we've got... Should I? Probably not really worth it. And it's going to hurt the durability of our arrows. Probably would have missed anyways. 
So, you know, it's really tempting to be like, oh, I'm going to chop down trees, but then if you carry the logs, you walk really slow. I feel like it's better to just take your time, observe. There's a little island out there, which I think is one of my favorite parts of the map thought about doing a playthrough where I set up like my main house there and then do the rest of the buildings over here. <clears throat> that's one of those things that's fine in theory and then you get into practice and you're like okay that's challenging. Alright we got some hops which are kind of worthless we can sell those though. And some animal feed when we get chickens we'll need that so not great but not the worst either. All right, we're getting close to where I actually built uh, in my first ever and my main ever playthrough. It was right up here. It's very, it's very strange to walk in an area that you developed in a previous playthrough. Like starting about at these trees until the bridge that we're going to get to is my other, not this bridge, the far bridge, is where my other settlement is. Just tons of stuff like, wow, this is, this is kind of surreal walking here. I changed, I didn't realize how much I changed the landscape, but I, I guess I did. Very fun though. Incredible, incredible versatility in this game. Is that the word I want to use? Like, Okay, I'm going to use a tad bit of my previous knowledge here. I happen to know that there's a deer spawn up here. Should be very close. We should be seeing a deer soon. I just want to shoot at least one deer so I have some meat to cook when we get home. Maybe I'm too far over. Oh, there's a badger. Oh, I missed it. Oh. What a dingus. Well, could have had a badger. I think there might be some pigs somewhere along here as well. I guess I shot too low. I swore there were pigs in this area, but I'm not seeing any. But this part, this road here, was the the other border of my settlement. So you can see it's pretty far. Uh, a torch I'll take, and a plank I'll take. And a stone axe I'll definitely take. We can give that stone axe to our... woodcutter who's doing nothing because I'm out here and I didn't give him the tool. In retrospect I would have I know I was like don't sprint enjoy the view but sometimes I just get impatient. But anyways my point is um, in retrospect I would have given them tools before I hired them Okay, there's a clay deposit over here, so we might be able to get a tool or a treasure, something, anything. Interesting. Okay, here it is. We'll at least take the oh, bronze shovel. Heck yeah. Very nice. Alright, I don't think we actually need anything in Gustovia right now. We just need to go home and uh, give our people their tools and cook them some food. A 
I thought maybe that was a pig up there, but it was a rock. So interestingly, this game, I was just looking at the water, thinking about food sources. This water does have fish. The, yeah, this water. This game does have fishing. I feel like I maybe did that in one of the very, very early episodes. Um, so you can make roasted fish. But it doesn't pay off super well. And they don't have, oddly enough, like just a fishing pole kind of fishing. You, which I guess maybe they didn't feel like coding that mechanic into the game. But instead, you get these fishing nets and a fishing hut. I, th I find it far easier, like, especially now with this, with this bow and arrow. We can just go, we can look on our map. We can just go down here. Uh, we can go, see how there's all these spots, like... We could just go down here, stab a couple fish, and uh, take them home and roast them, if we're so inclined. There's a there's a good number of spots along the way, and if you have a fishing hut made, you can go in there with the raw fish and turn them into fish meat, or you can just roast them on their own. Uh, but. First thing we want to do is go up to our resource storage and leave them an axe and a hatch, uh, an, a stone knife so they'll get started with their work. And then we need to plant some, our one piece of, <laughs> our one strip of rye and then Yeah, we'll have to look for deer up there, maybe on a clearer day. Today's a, a rough day for that. So we'll keep our iron knife with us, and we'll give them the stone knife and the stone axe. And then, oh, we only got, interesting, we only have two meat. I thought we had more food than that. I'm going to grab, we don't have food storage yet, so I'm going to grab them some cabbages. Let's give them some cabbages. So they live here, right? I live down there. They live up here. It's a little creepy, you know, arranged marriage -y kind of thing, but... So we want to roast the two meat for them. And then we will give them... I'm not going to give them the mushroom. We'll give them that. And we'll give them the roasted meat and the water skin with water. So now after a second, those things up in the top corner go away. And we need to plant. Time to plant. Oh, I hope we have fertilizer. If we don't have fertilizer, we can't do this. Because we don't have time to run to a city and get fertilizer and get back. We have ten. We don't have... We have five rot. We need more rot to do that. We don't have any manure. So, I think what we'll do is... We'll do five of each. So... It's silly, but... Some's better than none. So what we need to do is go over to eight... And we can grab <clears throat> fertilizer. We'll just do... Oh, we unlocked the old pigsty. 
Now that's actually a good shout. We should probably build the pigsty soon because that'll get us manure, which will enable fertilizer and a lot of other crop production. Okay. I don't know how, oh, this is only, I guess only four. Oops. Well, that's going to make our math a little bit weird, but we make do. Now we go back, whoops, oh, wrong button, here we go, we get our bag, and then we right click and go to our rye grain, one, two, three, four, Five, and then we switch to, dang, wrong button again. Switch to wheat grain. One. Come again. There we go. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay. Um, hmm. Do we try to look for animals to kill? Speak of the devil. Okay, did that destroy my arrow? No, it's there. It's there on the ground. Oh, I hope it picks it up. We got our arrow back. Let's go. So we got four meat and 16 feathers out of that. So basically a, a couple gold oh plus four meat which we can roast for our friends in here so pottage we could go yeah I'm not gonna mess with that right now let's just go ahead and cook these meat for them I should be fine. I'll sleep and I'll get my health back in the morning. Maybe we can run down and see if we can find some of the fish to kill. Okay, so they should they should stay alive at least. And we're gonna want to make. Okay. See if we can. Ah, it's probably too hard to see the fish right now, even if I am near them. We could try to hunt ducks. Think I can get this duck? He's pretty close. Giggity. Can I find the dead duck? Okay, here we go. No, not drink. Goof. Skin the duck. Yeah, there you go. All right, 10 feathers and four meat. That's probably good. Let's see if it's time for us to sleep yet. I would say something about the uh, you know position of the sun, but it's been so miserable weather. Good heavens. All right, we'll get, get our campfire going here, cook up our, our duck, have a little little duck dinner <laughs> well I'm not gonna eat it right now but okay let's take a look here we have some oh, we have eight fur in here that's good we have some extra shoes we could sell we have fur shoes we should put on when it gets to be winter time okay well, not too bad. We've got this wool fabric, which has a real nice price tag on it. 
Uh, remember, what you actually sell for is half. So, But I tend not to get rid of raw materials if I can help it. Eventually, we will need these things. Okay, so what I want to buy... Uh, probably not now. Maybe in the next day. Okay, we have 28 minutes till we can sleep till the next season. So I think I am going to do some inventory management here. And run up our extra stuff. Oh, I should have grabbed the fur out of there. So right now this doesn't seem that important because there's only the three of us working here. But eventually it's going to be very important to make sure that this is all managed well because like when we have chickens and I have somebody working on chickens they will get the animal feed out of here not out of the barn um, <clears throat> people will use the tools that are in here so this stuff like if I am If I have somebody, oh, we only have three arrows left. If I have somebody assigned to a job, well, that wooden hoe, our wooden hoe is almost broken. We can get rid of the wooden shovels because we picked up that bronze shovel. So we can do this and go to our inventory and put our bronze shovel on five. So this... Let's look at what we need to make a wooden hoe. We need a log and five sticks. Let's go ahead and do that now. A log and five sticks. Because that other one's going to break with one swing. So now we have the, our extra. Good. Not only does this help with the resources it gives us, it also helps us level up our hunting. So kind of a twofold reason to do that we we need to go specifically looking for boar and fox next time we're out what did we level up to get okay the woodshed we can build next episode the hen house we unlocked and the kitchen we have but if we take a look at our management we're already at six out of ten buildings so we're gonna want more people to join us so we need room for more houses so we're going to need to do more jobs to, to increase the dynasty reputation to increase the building limit so so on so on so on you see you see where I, what I'm getting at here but I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here and uh, I will see you all oh there's my the, there's our people let's go say hi real quick uh, we can talk to them so this is Dalagor. So you can do small talk. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, nice talking to you. And this is Bogna. I feel like this let me take a closer look at you is a little bit of a creepy line. What what he means is like it'll look at her statistics, but uh, you know, you can romance, but clearly they're they're hanging out together, so we're not gonna do that. Uh, but plus she's twenty nine, I don't know if she would be interested. Rasimir at the beginning of the game is only eighteen. So you have to take that into consideration when you're trying to romance. All right. Well, like I said, uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. And I will see you all in the next episode, which will be in the next season. And we will have plenty of work to do. As you can tell, this game sort of never stops. So, All right. Thank you so much. Bye for now.